vision and think in like five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. If you want something to last forever, it takes time to build it. So um, for the people that wants to start over there, just think baby steps. Think baby steps and all the baby steps will become huge. That's a fact. So right, am I right or uh, does it make an, it? Yes, absolutely, you are right. Entrepreneurship, it's, it's um, the little I know about it is that it's clearly opposite this, the classroom kind of school, you know? In, in the school, you want to be number one. You don't want to make mistakes. You know, you appear very intelligent. They tell you, define this, you define it, they clap for you. Mm. When you want to start a business, uh, the force is in the doing. So the moment you start, mm. because you're going to hit it anyway if you don't give up. But mm. the learning, the wisdom comes because the ball is rolling. You, are, you have moved. So no matter how intelligent you are, no matter what you calculate and whatever analysis that you do, if you don't start it, then you will not get the wisdom. But the moment you start it, then it will also prove the system, the environment. The market will prove whether what, what, whether what you're doing makes sense or it doesn't make sense. You will get feedback. A lot of the times you will fail, several times. You will yeah. lose money. People will cheat you. People will run away with you. You will have a lot of doubt in yourself. Family probably will not even give you support. Maybe your wife will tell you that you're stupid. Or your husband will tell you, why are you always wasting your time? Go and get a job. That's how it will start. Your ability to keep encouraging yourself and to keep moving without giving up and to learn and to learn how to manage all the components of business, the money, the people, the systems, the product, the markets, being able to package it well, you know, mm -hmm. and being frugal. You cannot think like somebody who does not have business. If I don't have business, my thinking is different. If I work in a company, I don't think about the salary. I don't think yeah. about the taxes. I don't think about anything. I just wait for you to pay me. If I'm the one running the company, I'm putting everything together and I'm responsible for it. If it doesn't work and there is debt, everybody can run away. I'm the one responsible. So the thinking is different. The intelligence required to build a business is so much different from the intelligence that you have to have from school. And that's why a lot of the times the people who are very much intelligent in school find it very difficult to build businesses because then they want everything to be perfect. But in entrepreneurship or in business, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be courageous and to keep going and to get yeah. upgrade, you know, upgrading yourself. And the more that you're ready to learn and challenge your thoughts and be ready to be told everything from the market to tell you that this product is not good, go and change it. And you'll not feel offended. You go there, change it. Or you find out that your 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 employee is stealing from you and you don't want to kill him. <laughs> because yeah, we hear yeah. a lot of terrible stories. Yeah. But that's, that, that's business and that's how it is. And if you keep going, if you stay at it for two years, three years, five years, sometimes five years this has not worked. Sometimes mm -hmm. even 10 years it has not worked, but you're becoming mm -hmm. because there is a particular position or disposition that you must know or you must be for the business start to start to work. And the moment you hit that level, you will mm -hmm. see growth. And sometimes the growth explodes. It's like, ah, but I didn't know this. I've tried everything, it's not working. Now this one is working. It's because now you are you, you can see. Now you are skilled. Now you are you, you are packaged, now you are trained. If you watch football, the, the best footballers, they didn't start to score uh, in precision in day one. They have trained several years. As a matter of fact, an expert in any field is not less than 10 years. And in business, it's like that. Yeah. So if you start a business and it's not taking you about 10 years, 10 years and you quit, you didn't qualify. You know, yeah. because it's going to take you a lot of time to become somebody yeah. who can score. And the same uh, with entrepreneurship. So, um, it's, it's being open and being open to learn and, and technology is now making a lot of things far easier. You know, you meet so many difficulties, but it's part of it. And you are not looking for people to, you know, clap for you. You are not looking for people to agree with you. And that's why you should be somebody who is always learning and you are learning from the very top. Because now exactly. the things that you have to deal with are, are things that shallowness cannot solve, you know? And, and for me, that, that's the entrepreneurship. Exactly. Exactly. Nice said. Nice said. So this is also what I believe. And like for the people that are um, trying to um, be successful or succeed now for a time, um, what do you have to say? Because like what I have been experienced, what I've experienced 
I've been an entrepreneur for like um, 16 years, something like this. 16, yes, 16, 17 years. But what I've experienced is that as soon as you start off with being entrepreneur, you start to bump against thing, things, um, <laughs> just metaphorically, you know, bump, um, okay. things will fall down, you will break walls. Right. If yes. I walk back, it, it, I made really a mess, you know, yes. by bumping things, destroying fall and those kind of yeah. things. So I can mm -hmm. imagine that there are now t people watching and they perhaps they are in Ghana or they will watch this. They are in Ghana or elsewhere in the world, and they have bumped their heads really a lot. They have fall. They have you know you know how the road of entrepreneur is. It's really. What do you have to say to them? They are now. They want to quit right now. Um, what do you have to say to them? <laughs> The fact that you've been able to start a business, many people will not be able to start a business. Mm. So the fact that you've been able to start something and maybe you are even in debt now, so many problems, the banks are chasing you, your friends are chasing, everybody's chasing you. Just as he said, it's part of business. You will go through that, there's none, there's no entrepreneur, even in countries that they have a lot of infrastructure set properly for successes, you know? You maybe the moment the model is working, you can go to a venture capital company and they give you money and you blow it. If you come to our country, you have to fight it yourself. You know, they may not be even uh, funded. And even if they fund you, the interest rate is very high. So that automatically, there will be troubles. Everybody will go through some level of trouble. They will have their share. And you really don't even get so much out as an entrepreneur from problems. No, because business itself is solving problems. You know, so you just have to tell yourself that this is about problem solving. Yes, there will be times that you don't have anything. And that's at the beginning where what to eat will even be a problem because now you have sold everything to this idea. It's not working. Sometimes you can give up on an idea, but you don't have to give up on yourself. And there is a difference. You know, some entrepreneurs will start maybe transport company. It doesn't work after five years. It goes into electric cars. Maybe same. Then he jumps into sports. Then maybe it goes into uh, entertainment. And then before you see it, the entertainment is working. And he said, oh, the entertainment is because now he has learned from all the other areas, you know? So it's a learning process. And you are the one to hasten the, the learning process. But everybody will go through the same learning process. So there's not, there's not a demon chasing you. It's not something from your family. It's just part <laughs> of the process. <laughs> it's just part of the process, you know? So when you are in the middle of the difficulties and, and all, the, don't kill yourself. Stay, because that's what everybody that you see, all the guys that you hear their name, they have gone through that. Your ability to withstand pressure, I think is number one key to be an entrepreneur. Exactly. To be able to start, fight back, resilience, to fight back. And you can be resilient when you've been able to connect with yourself. You know, why am I doing this business? What is the core? What is the mission? Why am I doing this? The moment you're able to define that, no matter the troubles, because you've been able to identify the purpose. Why are you into this? If you are into it because you want money, then don't do the business because you struggle a lot. You, there are easier ways to make money than to try to build business. You know, you, there has to be a bigger, bigger vision, bigger reason why you are building this business. And money could be the least of it. You know, so there will be a lot of uh, uh, resistances from it. So don't put the money. Say I'm doing this because of money. If you're doing this because of money, don't build business. Just go and invest the money. You get yeah. better ways. There'll be a lot of, uh, you don't have to deal with a lot of stress. But if you want to build business, then you must have the reason why you're building the business. You know, the higher vision, the lives that you want to change, the jobs that you want, the product that you want to bring to the market, the history that you want to change, the standards that you want to, be, you want to set, the example that you want to become so that people can look at you to say that we can also do it. Those things should be why you are building it. So you should be clear on that. Then you should also know yourself, your strength. What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? Which, which are the people that you have to work with? Because sometimes the people you work with will make you give up faster. <laughs> because if you don't yeah, have a lot of yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. strong system as an entrepreneur, you will give up. Because then you are talking to somebody who does not understand business. Maybe your friend is being paid high in a very big company. 
and at the end of every day you go there you sit you chat you will give up because he does not understand your world so you must connect with other entrepreneurs who are going through just about the same thing all the time you know so then you're talking and you're becoming because the problems will not stay forever it's like you you see the bodybuilders if you put me somewhere and you want me to lift maybe uh, 50 kg maybe i will not be able because i've not trained for it but if i give myself one year and i train i'll be able to lift it so you're training you're training so it, the way you talk to yourself is okay you cannot be uh, pessimistic a lot of africans particularly those of us who were born here a lot of the times we are a bit uh, pessimistic too much you know we are super pessimistic we see all the problems you see all the negatives it is very hard for you to become a successful entrepreneur if you don't believe in yourself and if you don't believe in your country so if you if you use the media if you use the education if you if you talk to any average person without proper understanding of things it is very negative you would pinpoint all the bad things that don't work here how people will screw you how people will lie to you listen they happen everywhere so you are not going to succeed if you spend the energy that you need to push the goal in solving all the negativity you know so you must talk to yourself that this is the area that i've, I've been calling i'm part of the of those who must solve the problems not be the one talking about how corrupt the government is how politicians are stealing our money you know how people you don't trust if you do that you will give up on yourself because then you have a lot of negative energy in you you know and people also we are very much superstitious you know we are religious so much that <laughs> some pastor or some prophet somewhere will come and tell you why this idea <coughs> is not working and why somebody else is behind why it's not working a lot of the time if it's not working it's because you're ignorant you're ill-equipped that's why it's not working it's not because there is any force anywhere you know so those are the things that you have to have to keep going right. you know? and um to give an um like i know this is this this story is like an extreme one <clears throat> yeah. but i know um, a caribbean guy and this guy has been really struggling and fighting his whole life for success you know and what is happening this guy after fighting like a long time long really really long time he um he is now president of a business that is investing between three and six billion dollars every year. It's a guy that lived in Rotterdam, where I am in Netherlands and from the Caribbean. So um, he's now a really, really, really big man, big man. Wow. But if you have seen this guy, his story was really incredible, amazing story. And what you've seen is that people can go from like really low, low, low to the top. Really, this is what I've seen with my own eyes. So for everyone, just don't give up. Don't give up. Like it doesn't matter if you are living in America and you go to Africa to get a disappointment over there. It doesn't matter, just keep on walking forward. Keep on walking forward because um, eventually, everyone, you will be really glad that you keep on walking and set it, just keep on walking and reach the finish line because it's all about the finish line, reaching the finish, finish line. Because when you get to the finish line, there the trophy will be there for you not mm -hmm. before the fin before the finish line when you Absolutely. arrive at the finish line right Absolutely. Absolutely. okay so I have, <laughs> yeah yeah i have one more question yes. um, um because i see also question of afri gem over here mm -hmm. but i have an other one this is uh, a totally other thing this is um, from Alison, and she's asking, what advice do you give about choosing a contractor to build your house? Do you know about this, or do you want to save this for an other show, live uh, um, session? OK. Um, if you want to choose, a, maybe if it's in Ghana, and you mm -hmm. want to build a house, 
Mm -hmm. um, um, I think you must look at the works that they have done, mm. the contractor, mm. what they have done, and then talk to the client. Mm. Talk to the client, the kind of work that the contractor did for them. Were they honest? Mm. Did they deliver on time? Was the output okay for them? And talk mm. to not just one client, talk to about five, especially if you are, if you are investing uh, a lot of money in that building. Talk to them and, and make, make sure you settle on the timelines where they truthful as well. Mm. Look for character, look for expertise, you know, and, and, and look for those because it's an investment and it takes a lot of money. You know, so talk to people. And there are also organizations that manage some of these contractors. For instance, you can talk to them. You can go to Institute of Engineers. Um, you can get to their website. You can ask them if they can recommend somebody for you. Or you can go to uh, Institute of Architects, you know, Architects mm -hmm. as well, or surveyors. Continuous Surveyors Institute. They all will, can have professionals who will do for you. The only thing is that sometimes they, they their charges are a bit high, you know. Mm -hmm. But then you get you get you, you get to get good product, and and you you reduce a lot of stress from yourself. Okay, okay, okay. And the next question is. Um, but I'm also I'm a, I I also build. The only thing is that. I yeah, but this is the next question. The next question <laughs> is uh, because this lady. Is also following you, and um, you know, I know her. How was mm -hmm. your experience? How was your experience different working as your own contractor? So, how was your experience with working as your own contractor versus working with an other co contractor? If I understand it the right way. Okay. Okay. What well, we built a construction company. We work with some of the you know, some big companies in Ghana, we built, uh, okay, we, we did a lot of our great works, electricity, um, electrical works, we did proper uh, civil works and housing. Uh, we built some markets as well, some polyclinics. Uh, my experience with, uh, we focus on not directly working with the government because, you know, you, you wait too much to get paid and sometimes it kills businesses. Um, my experience with a lot of them is that you must insist on the timelines of payment. If they are not going to pay you on time, your business is gone. You know, mm. your business is gone if they don't pay you on time. And the other thing is that if they tell you to go and borrow to work for them, you will lose your business as well. Because mm. then if they don't pay you on time, you have no business. You'll be in trouble. Mm. You know, so uh, working for them, that's it. Now, using my own company to work, I try to make sure that we have money before we go to work on our own project. At least we can project the next three months. So there is no problem there. If I'm working for somebody and they don't pay me, my boys will fight me, you know, because then you have to pay them every month or every week. And, and you, you know it, um, contra uh, construction workers are crazy. So you must make sure that you have money to always <laughs> pay them on time. So in your own project, you must make sure that uh, your timelines, and you have to pick somebody you can trust, particularly the engineers. I will go for character beyond the technicalities. Because if the mm. person has good character, there's a lot that they will discuss with you. They may not even know a particular uh, work activity, but they will discuss with you. But if the person does not have good character, he's trying to hide the thing from you so that you can take money from you. And that, most of the time, will end uh, in disaster. You know, So I will go for somebody that has some level of values and then uh, an appreciable level of understanding of the technicalities. Okay, so when I'm going to build in Ghana, um, yes. you you are uh, going to build it for me. Is yes, okay? sir, yes, yes. Even okay. if I don't build, I can give you an engineer I trust. Okay. Who I know that I can hold him. Uh, okay. Responsible. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, another because question it, is, what mm -hmm. advice would you give people who are not familiar with Ghana in choosing a place to build? Please say it again. So, um, where can you recommend someone to build in Ghana? You know, if they are new, where, what is the place that is recommended by you for them to go and build over there? Okay. So, uh, Ghana has 16 regions now. <coughs> uh, we have Greater Accra on the coastal bit, uh, um, uh, central region on the coastal bit as well. Beyond that, you go through the western region. Now, the western region, they have separated it into two. 
uh, you go beyond, you have Eastern region. That's if you're going up uh, Ashanti region, Hafo, Volta is on the other side. So uh, Northern region, Tamale. I think that issue spread. Accra, usually, you must be very, uh, you must have people you trust so much uh, so that you don't get into land issues in Accra. I think mm -hmm. that we previously, there were a lot of land problems in Accra, but maybe they are solving them nowadays. Uh, mm -hmm. Beyond that, beyond Accra, a lot of the other places, land issues are not so much. Once in a while, you have some, some, you know, some problem, but largely, uh, most places in Ghana, beyond Accra, the land issues are very much uh, low. You know, so I would say that if you want to live in Accra, the land, if you want to buy land in the cities, very expensive. If you go in the suburbs in Accra, maybe they come down a little bit, but then you have to also compensate yourself with the road, the quality of road that you have to travel to get to where you're building your house. You know, so I think that if you are moderate, you would you would want to look at other regions as well to see uh, if you would want to stay there, you know. Because I think that it should spread. It should spread. You should go to a halfway. You should go to Asante. You should go to uh, uh, the north. You should, it should spread, and you can even own more than one one place, you know. So okay. it should okay. spread. Yes. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. So. Um, so um, what you are, what I understand is that. Um, it doesn't matter where you go, everywhere it's it's good to build, right? Yes. In yes. Okay. Okay, okay, yes. okay, 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 okay. Okay, and then one more question. Uh, what are some of the common mistakes? What are some of the common mistakes you see the diaspora making when moving to Ghana? I think that sometimes they 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 would their condition. Sometimes they think that those here are not enlightened, and that for me is very unfortunate. Mm. All right, uh, I don't. It's a it's a different world. The way we understand. It. For instance, there was a time I was in Holland. There, eh? I don't speak Dutch. I was trying to take the train. I couldn't do it, so I called mm. this white guy to come and help me to do it for me. Mm. Uh, there was a time I was in England. The same. Uh, the train I couldn't. Why? Because here I'm in Trotro. It's mm. a whole different structure. The fact that I'm not able to do that, that's not mean, I don't know. It's, it's a whole different environment. Yeah. You know, so the same. So when you come, the, our way of doing things may not be. And who said that the West is the standard? The West is not standard. It's their standard yeah. in their environment. If I go to China, China's standard is different. So when you come to Africa, don't say that African standard is a, no. And I think that is very unfortunate. So you must understand that I have this per, you know, perception from this culture. When I come here, this is how they also do their things. It does not mean that they are not exposed or they are not enlightened. No, because there's a lot of data they have from the ground. You know, for, for instance, when the when the Ashantis beat the British and cut the head of uh, of their governor, they thought that they could use only the guns, but they didn't know that the Ashantis had superior power. The only reason they could overcome them was that some of our people, you know, connected <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, and we joined forces with them. That's why they could overcome Asante. Other than that, they could never have been able to beat Asante, you know? So uh, there's a lot of local information that we have that the West would want to call it uncut, but it's not uncut. It's as standard as in any other they apply here. So the same. So when they, the West come, at, um, the diaspora come, they should know that these people are as enlightened, as, as intelligent. They may not write, they may not even read English, but they know something that you don't know. Just as you know something that they don't know. You know, so I think that that respect should be there. And um, they should also study a lot about the difficulties, about the history, about what we have also gone through. Because I think the, the, the extreme ignorance in terms of the, 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 the histories that both of us have gone through sometimes uh, make us that much uh, uninformed about how we treat ourselves. And for me, it's very easy to deal with a diasporan who is very uh, wide read in terms of history and some bit of humility. You know, it's very easy. For me, I don't speak American English. So if you come and you speak American English to me and I say pardon, that's not mean I don't, it's a different accent, you know? Yeah. So the same. So you must come with that level of appreciation that these are my people. And as a matter of fact, this continent is for all of us, whether That's they it. like it or not. When they treat them, when you see, for instance, when Floyd was killed, do you know how many Africans were sad? 
Mm. It's like this yeah. is family. When we were growing up, when you when I if I take you to my village now, nobody will see where you're from. They will say that which town you're from in Ghana. What is your name? That's what they ask you. They will never say that. Ah, this one is a uh, European. They will never see it. Exactly. They exactly. welcome you like anybody. and that's 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 Ghana or that's Africa. All of Africa, they welcome. You know, so so that thing is there. We always welcome, and they take that. Uh, what you know, sometimes when people would say that because you are friendly means you are ignorant, and that is not true. You're friendly does not mean you're naive. You just have good heart, and a lot of our people have good heart, so they will smile with you. Uh, don't take that for granted, you know. And when you come and you see the mosquito and the gutter, the fat is that in every society, there are those who have money, there are those who don't have, there are those who are trying. You know, so for me, for instance, if you see the guys selling on the street, they're making effort. So if you see people selling on the street and say that, ah, there's a lot of poverty. No, but there are some places where the government feeds them. Which one is better? The man who is getting up to go and sell on the street and the one who is waiting for government to feed them. It's not the same. This one is more responsible for their lives. You know, so yeah. it's the understanding of it. So when you come, you don't just have pity and to think that the people are poor. No, they're not, no, they're not poor. Like that, it just that it and um, you know what I've seen is that, um, like, um, what you are saying about the language, sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you have people that are thinking that because you can't speak their language fluently and 100%, that this means automatically you are not smart, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. Chinese have taken the world without knowing one word of English, in English. Or one yeah. word of Spanish or French, you know? That's right. So um, intelligence, it's not in the speaking, but it's in the head. It's this is what I believe, right? Yes. So, um, and what I've seen, and this what you are saying, is this is what I have seen in Ghana when I was there. That the people, they are really intelligent. Yeah. However, because we don't speak the language and we don't know the culture, mm -hmm. we can't understand them exactly what they say. And you know why I understand this is because mm -hmm. what I've seen is the Ghanaian people are talking with words, with feeling, with hands, in mm -hmm. a certain way, you know, in a certain way of flow. And right. you need to know these dimensions to understand exactly what they are saying. It's not just only the language, because there are there are some um, languages that exist or only the words, it's cold. Like the Dutch language, it's cold. People in the Netherlands are talking, they don't move the hand, they don't move anything, they speak. And that yeah. the, there are a lot of languages that exist of, of this kind of um, dimensions. Okay. And what I've seen is that the Ghanaian language exists of a few different dimensions. One is the word, the, mm -hmm. the hands, the talk, and the feeling, how and they the express feeling. it, you know? Um, and for someone, and you know, this, this, only this to do this, and to know how to do this and communicate in those dimensions is already an intelligence level. Oh, exactly. Own. Yeah. You know, so um, what I've seen is that um, this is one of the mistakes that uh, diaspora are making when they go over there. It's not understanding that it's multiple layers of communication. So, um, and I believe that the diaspora has, you know, by we talking to each other and um, explaining a few things, and I hope I'm right. If you say there are some things that I am not right about, just say it because I'm also learning, you know? Okay. Um, but by speaking those kind of things, this kind of things, we can get to know each other uh, better. Is it yeah. right what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. It's right. Absolutely. Because mm. you see the cockiness of mm. the European man mm. has affected all the people who live in their land. Mm. The arrogance, mm. the 
priority thinking. Mm. It affected everybody. So let's say a Ghanaian is living here. The moment he moves to America, he comes back. If he's not well conscious, mm. he tries to look down upon his own people because now he knows America. So I've not been to America, therefore I'm not exposed. It's not true. If you're diasporan and you come here, there is something. It's like coming to your father's house. You mm. come with the heart to learn. Mm. Because there's so much.